I picked up a drum sander from my friend Donovan about two years ago. And we got it out of his shop. And I got it into my shop. And I got it hooked up to a motor and running. But it still had a few issues. The biggest thing that needed to be fixed was that the tables on the original sander were bent. And for a sander like this to really work accurately, the tables have to be perfectly flat. So my first task has been to remake the tables out of wood. So a few months ago, when I was making our dining room table from the glue lamp beams left over from building this wood shop, I also cut up a few pieces to make the tables for the sander. Now those pieces didn't need to be as long, so I used some shorter sections for the sander tables and I cut it to a usable width. Then I resawed the beams in half because I didn't really need that much thickness for the tables. And while resawing, I, I didn't use a fence. I just drew a line down the center of the beam and cut them in half following the line. And at this point, the blade on the bandsaw had just been sharpened, so it, it went through the thickness of these beams pretty easily. Then I planed the cut surface. I didn't try and face joint these. I figured that the sides of the beams were, were pretty straight. Then I jointed one edge, and I glued two of these pieces together to make something wide enough for the sander tabletop. And I figured the glue lamp beams are a series of pieces glued together, so I didn't really need to use biscuits or a spline or anything like that. Then these pieces sat for several months <laughs> while I did other things. I needed to shape these pieces that I had made into something that would fit on the sander and make two tables. So the tops had to be perfectly flat and the bottoms had to have a shape that would interface with the sander. So in looking at the original tables, I could make something with two tracks on each side of the table and a curved cutout at the end to make the space for the drum, and some kind of cutout for the clips that hold the tables to the frame on the underside of the table. So I modeled up what I thought would work as a shape for the underside of the table. Now the first thing to do is to make a flat face to one side of the tabletop pieces that I made. So I mounted the first piece to the CNC table and I just screwed it in place. And I was going to surface the top, so I needed the screws to be below the surface so they wouldn't get hit by the, by the router bit. And I sanded off some of the finish from the beams, mostly just to try and save my router bit. And I started surfacing. And I decided I really needed the brush on the router as it was throwing sawdust everywhere. And this helped quite a bit. I figure using the glue lamp beams for this, this will be about the most stable wood I can use. Over using a big slab of something, that would be one, one piece. Now on the first side of the tables, I surfaced both sides, and I really didn't need to do that in the end. But as I was surfacing the face that was going to be the tabletop, there were a lot of defects in the beam, as in lots of little knots. So I thought it'd be nice to cut those out and then plug them with, with clear pieces of wood. So I cut out a bunch of circles from the tabletop, then cut out a bunch of circle plugs to go in those holes. And in cutting out the plugs, I didn't cut them all the way through as they're, they're little pieces. 
and they'll either get picked up by the router and thrown or sucked up in the dust collection if they're cut free on the router. So I cut them almost all the way through, then finished up the cut on the bandsaw. Then when I put the plugs into the holes, I can put them in upside down and mill off the top that's sticking up from the hole. So I'm gluing the plugs in at this point. It's a little tricky because I think air gets caught inside the hole as you're trying to pound the plugs in. And because of the glue, there's no way for the air to get out. But it worked. <laughs> then I cleaned up the top surface of the table. Now I can flip the piece over and work on the bottom. I think this was the second table that I didn't surface both sides of. So then I need to carve the shape into the bottom. And in doing this, it basically surfaced the bottom of the piece as well. But it's basically a space for the rails on each side of the sander, a space for the clips to hold the tabletops to the frame, and a space for the drum of the drum sander to fit. Now I did a roughing pass first, where it took out most of the material really quickly, but it didn't necessarily leave the best surface. Now with most of the bottom, the roughing pass gives me a good enough shape, but where the drum is going to fit into the table, I wanted to make that surface smoother and follow more of the arc of the drum. So I did a finishing pass on that section. So when the router bit follows the arc of that shape, it gives a, a better surface and something that's closer to the shape of the drum. Then the last thing to do is to cut the piece free from the rest of the material. So I just went around and cut out a big rectangle. Now on the first table I did, I cut this part all the way through, which was fine except for a little bit of the corner of the front edge of the table kind of came apart. The wood gets really thin there and it just splintered apart. So I was able to glue that section back together again. Now I made my measurements of the sander and the space that I had in the table to fit into the base wasn't quite big enough as in the tables were, were ever so slightly too big. So I manually cut off just a little bit of the width and then it fit just fine. And this is the second tabletop. Now with the second tabletop, I didn't cut it all the way through when I cut it out of the surrounding material, trying to keep it from chipping out like it did on the first table. But that meant I had to cut the piece free on the bandsaw. Then I sanded the edges, make them nice and flat and straight. I suppose I could have gone around with a trim router and cleaned it up as well. Now the tables fit, but they didn't quite sit flat. And I figured out there's a little panel that fits in next to the drum that doesn't quite slide all the way down flat with the supporting surface of the sander. I cut out a little more of the table to make space for that panel. One thought was to grind that panel down, but I didn't really want to damage the sander, so I changed the table. Now I put the sandpaper back on the sander. I had taken it off to look at the drum, and the drum could use some work, but for now I'm just going to use it the way it is. So the sandpaper is held on with two bars that screw into the drum. And as you put those bars in place, they tighten the paper up. So now I can put the tables in place and make sure they're nice and flat, which they are. And they seem to be perfectly parallel. Now, another thing that I really needed to fix on the sander was to slow the drum down. The, the drum was spinning too fast. 
and it was vibrating too much. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I just got a smaller pulley for the motor side of the, the belts that drive the drum. So I think I went from an eight inch pulley to a five inch pulley. I, I think that's what it was. And the motor still works. <laughs> and I put the belts on. And doing this meant I had to move the motor a little bit. And it definitely runs a lot smoother now. This feels more like what it's supposed to be, I think. And the, the old papers I could find on the sander said 800 RPM on the drum. And I think this is pretty close now. Now I added some oil to the bearings. These are Babbitt bearings, so that there's no balls or, or cylinders or anything in there. It's just a sleeve around the axle of the drum. And I adjusted the height of the drum to where it was just a hair above the tables. Now, back to working on the tables, they weren't quite coming into the center enough. I wanted them to at least come up and touch the drum. So I removed a little more of the bottom that would allow the tables to slide in towards the center. So now they can touch the drum. And I sanded the tops and the bottoms. <laughs> and I sanded the tops to 320, trying to get them really smooth. I wanted the tops to be as slick as possible so that slide, sliding things across the table wouldn't, wouldn't be difficult. And I put finish on. I just used some polyurethane. Now the first coat was kind of thick as this polyurethane's getting a little old. And I tried to get that as smooth as I could. Then I sanded the tops once it was dry. And I thinned my polyurethane a little bit with mineral spirits and put a second coat on, trying to keep it as smooth and, and flat as I could. Now I wanted to put the clips on that will hold the tables down to the frame. And I had made little cutouts for these, but they really weren't going to work. They weren't quite long enough and they weren't deep enough. I really took a look at how these pieces worked and how the different heights of where they sat would work. And I was going to need a hole for the, the bolt on the knob and a little pocket for the back side of the clip to go. So I cut those out. The bolt on the hand screw is a 7 16th inch bolt, which is a common size, but it isn't very common. <laughs> or at least I couldn't find any wood threaded inserts that worked with that. So I found a set that I think are meant for metal, but I'm just gonna use them in my wood tables. And I needed a very specific hole for those, so that's why the CNC helped in making that hole. This is a project where making a prototype table first would have been really helpful. <laughs> That's really what I should have done. <laughs> I kept going back and having to modify the table as I figured things out. In putting in the threaded insert, I found a short 7 16 inch bolt that would work as a driver for the insert. So I can put some washers on that bolt as a stop, then put the insert on the bolt, then drive that whole system into the hole and pull the bolt out. And the insert should be in place. So now I can put those clips in and you can see how the hand screws work with the inserts and the holes and how the clip fits into the bottom of the table. And that hole will allow the clip to be perpendicular to the hand screw when it's holding onto the frame of the sander. So if you want to move the tables in and out, you just loosen up these clips and you move the table in and out. And then when you want to hold the table in place, you just tighten up those clips. Now, I wanted to sand the underside of the table where the curve was just a little bit so I could get the, the table shape to match the drum perfectly. 
And once I did that, I could start using it. Now, one of the big things I want to be able to do is to sand the rim of a bowl blank that's dried and get it flat and ready to use on the lathe. I have my shirt tucked in because I really don't want to get it caught in the, in the drum of the sander. Then I put some wax on the tables just to see if I could get them a little slicker. <laughs> and it helps. And I tried polishing that a little bit and it kind of worked. Now one thing I know I really have to do very soon is to get a cover on the belts. At this point, the, the belts are more dangerous than the drum. <laughs> Thanks for watching.